my body flows the blood of singers and dancers, makers of the dance regalia, carvers and basket makers, hunters and fishermen, all believers in the traditional religion and the old ways. I know I am these people, and I have done all those things before, many, many years ago. Those words were written by another American Indian, Brian Tripp, a Kaduk artist. His land lies amongst the tall trees and bright rivers of Northern California. And even though I am Muscogee from the southwestern plains of Oklahoma, Brian's words speaks as clearly to me as if they had been written by a member of my own tribe, a thousand miles and a hundred cultures away. They speak of the great things all Indians share. They sing with the rhythms of our mythology, the old traditions of stories and legends handed down by the generations. Our heritage springs from our deep and abiding relationship with the land. We are part of it, with each in his own center of the world, to which he is forever connected, of which he is forever a part of. Through the centuries, this has sometimes been all we have had. This center, those connections. It is strong. But today, the world, our world, has changed. Many of us no longer live on our ancestral lands. Much has been taken from us, except our connections to the earth. And so, much remains. In the strength of our traditions, our ceremonies, rituals, art, and music. It remains in our songs. It remains in our powwows and giveaways. And, to the greatest degree, it remains in the heart of who we are. Our families, in which we claim our heritage of teaching, sharing, and respect. My grandmother showed me how to to pound the acorn when I was just a little girl. We are an extension of our people, our families, elders, parents, and children, our tribe, our country, our universe. It is a unique thing, the Indian family. It is the beginning of the universe. Today, the lives of the Indian people have changed, but the rhythms of the earth still echo through the valleys and hills, across the prairies, it is the sound of songs handed down from generation to generation, a gift the families share. We are the singers of songs. We are these people. History has recorded the price that was paid by the Indian people when the time of change came. And it came to all of California. In the north, the cry of gold was as the wind before the storm, pushing the Indian people ahead of it, pushing them into isolated patches far from the rich lands of home. In the south, strangers from across the seas brought another kind of change. So great were the changes, so complete the submersion of the old order by the new that the southern Indians who built the white man's new communities were called Mission Indians. Even their names were taken. And yet these tribes knew who they were, because as always, one thing remained, the old ways. A history kept alive in the spoken word, passed from elder to child, from tribe to tribe. Though tossed by the winds of change, the Indian people still stood rooted to the earth and to each other in the family where the heritage was shared. This is a part of a history that was never written. And it is still spoken here today. The power of these stories still works in the minds of our children. And living here becomes a part of them, linking them to the past and preparing them for the future. Today, there are over 200,000 American Indians living in California, some in the cities, some in the rural areas on the small rancherias and reservations. But though diverse in language and culture, all share in the common Indian family. 
Lola, hey, Los Rilo, you to me, hey, hey, The beginning and the sustenance of our lives is where we turn and return for wisdom and strength to renew our spiritual ties to each other and to the land. Medical science now shows that people with strong friendships stay healthier longer. It's an ancient tradition in the Indian family to offer friendships to the old, the young, the orphan, the stranger. And in a time of need, it's a strength that all Indians can share. We can turn to it, whether the family shares the same culture or the same blood, whether or not that family even comes from the same part of the country. Our family, our people, our country, our universe. Woven into the strands of our history and taught within the family are the ancient arts, a legacy given of meticulous order, beauty, and meaning. It is another constancy in an ever-changing world. It says, I have done these things before, many times and many years ago. Yes. Yes, everyone's works there and um, the show's all set up and we're ready to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just working on the drawing now. Sure. All right, then we'll see you at the opening. Bye-bye. The image of our people is mirrored in our art. It is another way we keep our traditions alive. We are all extensions of our people. We were taught that the world was not made for us, it was made with us. If we are to partake of the earth's power, we must return it. That way, we will remain connected. And it is the Indian family, our families, that keep us whole and at one with the world. An Indian child grows strong knowing he has many parents. The elders convey the authority of wisdom intertwined with patience and affection. The parents care for all the children, sharing the love and responsibility of many. In this way, the Indian family extends beyond just the kinship of blood. It is a community of support and respect, of arms and hearts open to its members. And within it, each generation gives the heritage of the great extended family to the next. Our family is very large, and much of its wisdom speaks of the relationship between the spirit and the body. We know that indulgence or excess can come between them, can compromise the health of our minds and bodies. And so our family is wrapped in robes of tradition and values that exhort us to fulfill our wholeness our oneness with the universe, our connection with now, and with the future. Within our families, we can each find the warmth of these robes. Taught us how to take care of the feathers and take care of our, our costumes. <laughs> Today, the world is learning a truth the Indian people have known for centuries. Friends and family can be good medicine. The ancient tradition of support and respect we have in our families can really mean the difference between health and sickness. In our tradition, we know this. In our families, we practice it. The other fellow gets to toggle, he's heading down there. You gotta stop him any way you can. You can tackle him, you know, pick him up and throw him down to, and hold him there till somebody comes down and helps you. There is a mutual sense of responsibility. Our family to its members, the members to the family. 
the family is our haven. When we are weakened, the family can give us strength. When we are frightened, it can give us new courage. When we are confused, it can inspire us. And when we are lost, our family of friends and its living heritage can help us find ourselves. Watch down there. Turn your heads. Okay, as soon as he drops that toggle, you try to get away, or you try to get him down. You, you try to hold him. Okay, and that's the way I want you guys to start. Today, many of our families live in a world which seems to have no time for tradition, where the simple answer and the hurry-scurry make walls that trap and defeat people. But we have strong medicines against that. Our families, our communities, our traditions, our heritage of music and dances. The unique thing that lives between our old and our young, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, between tribe and tribe. That great heritage of family, linking all Indians together. Through my body flows the blood of singers and dancers, makers of the dance regalia, carvers and basket makers, hunters and fishermen, all believers in the traditional religion and the old ways. I know I am these people, and I have done all those things before, many, many years ago. <laughs> 